Hi everyone, this is Miss Moore and today we are learning how to convert between fractions, decimals, and percents, as well as finding the percent of a number in various real world problems. I know that not everyone has a copy of the lesson notes in front of them today, so please feel free to make your own notes using lined paper or graph paper. You'll also need a scientific calculator for today's lesson, not the one on your phone, so please pause the video here while you find a calculator and the other materials you might need. Today we're warming up with an interesting problem. This article was published in 2017 and it was titled, An eight-year study finds heavy french fry eaters have double the chance of death. Hmm. Yes, it's true. According to a peer-reviewed study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, eating french fries doubles your risk of death. But how many french fries? And moreover, what was the original risk of death? The study says that if you eat fried potatoes three times a week or more, you double your risk of death. So if we take an average person in this study, like a 60 year old man, what is his risk of death regardless of French fry consumption? Well, it turns out it's 1%. So if we took a random sample size of say 100 60 year old men, how many more will die from eating French fries three times weekly for the rest of their lives compared to without the added risk? Take a minute to think through this warm up question and pause the video here while you try and solve it. So, 1% of 100 is equivalent to multiplying 100 by 0 0.01, and we're going to learn why that's true in today's lesson. This means that one person will die, assuming they're not eating that much french fries. What does doubling the risk really mean? Well, it means that 1% becomes 2%. So 2% 2 of 100 is equivalent to 0 0.02 times 100, meaning that two people will die. If you were able to work this out on your own, well done. If not, that's one of the things we'll be learning in today's lesson. The power of finding the percent of a number allows us to evaluate the statistical information that we encounter all the time in the news. Having a news article scream at you that eating french fries doubles your risk of death is terrifying, but when you actually look at the math of the situation, you realize that it's nowhere nearly as profound as they claimed it to be. Depending on how the numbers are presented, they have quite a different impact on us as the reader or the listener. Sometimes we encounter statistics and other information in the form of fractions, but other times we get them in the form of a percent or even a decimal. So computational fluency in converting between these three ways of expressing the same value is really important. We'll start today with a recap of important concepts from Math 7 with respect to decimals, fractions, and percents. Starting with a recap on what the decimal place value system really means. The first number after the decimal point is how many tenths you have, the second is how many hundredths, and the third is how many thousandths, and so on. So if we had 0.2 for example, the 2 is in the tenths position, so this must mean 2 tenths. 0.11 goes as far as the hundredths position, so this must be 11 hundredths. 0.008 goes as far as the thousandths position, so this must be eight thousandths. Let's recap how to convert fractions into decimals. There's two main ways to do it. The first way you could do it, if you didn't have access to a calculator, is that you could create an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 10, 100, 1000, or so on, so that you can then express that number in terms of tenths, one hundredths, etc. Our first example is one half. The fastest way to get this with a denominator of ten, a hundred, or a thousand is to simply multiply top and bottom by five. This will give us five over ten, which is equivalent to five tenths. Pause the video here while you try these two examples. In the second example, 50 can be converted to 100, so we end up with 0 0.06, or 6 hundredths. 200 can be converted into 1,000, 
so we end up with 0 0.095, or 95 thousandths. When we don't have a nice denominator that can be converted into 10, 100, or 1,000, we can divide the numerator by the denominator. Now, you can do this manually using long division, or if you have a calculator, you can use that. Let's do the first one together. This means 4 divided by 35. If we did this in long division, we would put 35 on the outside and 4 on the inside. Now we all know that 35 doesn't fit into 4, so when we do that, we put a 0 up top and we have to start adding decimals after the 4. Now we consider 40. How many times does 35 fit into 40? Once. 1 times 35 is 35. 40 minus 35 is 5, and we bring down the next 0. How many times does 35 fit into 50? Once. 1 times 35 is 35, and 50 minus 35 is 15. 35 doesn't fit into 15, so we'll bring down our last 0. How many times does 35 fit into 150? 4 times. 4 times 35 is 140. We could keep going like that to get as many decimal points as we need. For now, I'm just going to say dot 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 to symbolize that that particular decimal keeps going. Try the next one on your own, without using a calculator. 7 eighths is equivalent to 0 0.875. Now, if you have your calculator, you can verify each of these and make sure you got them right. Simply type 4 divided by 35, and you will get 0 0.114, etc., etc. Likewise, 7 divided by 8 will give you 0 0.875. Please don't forget that long division is a really useful skill to know. For example, when I was in first year university studying engineering and taking calculus, we were not allowed to have calculators on our final exams. The whole margin of my exam got filled up with long division as I was simplifying complex answers. How do we convert fractions to percents? Step one, we convert the fraction to a decimal. And step two, we multiply that decimal by 100%, which is equivalent to shifting the decimal place two places to the right. For one half, for example, we convert this into a decimal either using our calculator to go one divided by two, or using the method that we practiced above by converting the denominator into 10, 100, or 1,000. I'm gonna try and do this manually. So 1 half times 5 over 5 equals 5 over 10, which is 5 tenths. If we multiply our answer by 100%, this moves the decimal place 2 to the right, and our final answer is 50%. Try the next two on your own and pause the video here while you do it. For part B, I converted 3 quarters into 0 0.75 manually, and then multiplied my answer by 100% to arrive at 75%. For part C, I did 7 eighths on my calculator because I know I can't turn 8 into 10 or 100 easily, and then I multiplied my answer by 100%, arriving at 87.5%. To convert percents to fractions, we divide by 100%, or shift the decimal place two places to the left. Then we convert our decimal to a fraction and reduce the fraction to simplest form. Let's do one together. Step one is dividing by 100%. So we'll do 52% divided by 100% equals 0.52. Now we need to convert this to a fraction. This can be expressed as 52 hundredths. To simplify, you'll notice that both numerator and denominator are divisible by 4. 52 divided by 4 is 13. 100 divided by 4 is 25. So here's our answer in simplest form. Please pause the video here while you try B and C. One hundred and thirty-two percent divided by a hundred percent gives us one point three two, 
which can be expressed as one whole and 32 hundredths, which we can simplify to 1 and 8 twenty-fifths, which we can convert into an improper fraction as 33 over 25. 0.3% divided by 100% gives us 0.003, which can be expressed as 3 thousandths. Let's use all of these skills to find the percent of a number. In the example 50% of 80, we need to understand what this means and how to calculate it. Of means times or multiply. But we can't just go 50 times 80 in our calculator. To multiply a percent by a number, we need to convert that percent into a decimal. So this means 0 0.5 times 80, which is equivalent to 1 half times 80 over 1, if you don't have a calculator. Top times top and bottom times bottom gives us 80 over 2, which simplifies to 40. Let's do another example together. 5% of 80. 5% 5 needs to be converted to a decimal. This is equivalent to 0 0.05 times 80, or 5 hundredths times 80 over 1. We can divide top and bottom by 10, and we can further divide 5 and 10. So we are left with 8 over 2, which simplifies to 4. Please pause the video here while you try these examples on your own. OK, let's compare our answers. This is a useful skill which can be applied in a number of real-world problems. Let's try these two questions together. An Apple Watch costs $349 plus 12% tax, your 5% GST plus your 7% PST. What is the after-tax cost of this watch? Using a calculator is allowed. There's two ways to solve a problem like this. If you think you know how to do it, go ahead and pause the video here. Otherwise, let's go through this example together. If we determine 12% of $349, this is going to give us the tax on the watch. 12% of 349 is 0 0.12 times 349. This is $41.88. We can then go and add that tax back to the original cost of the watch. $349 plus $41.88 gives us the after-tax cost of $390.88. Can you figure out a different way to solve this question? It's possible to do these two steps in one by acknowledging that 12% gives you the tax, 100% of $349 would give you just the watch, but together 112% of $349 would give you the watch and the tax in a single calculation. Let's try this. 112% of $349. This is equal to 1.12 times 349. Using our calculator, that gives us $390.88. Please pause the video here while you try the concert example on your own. There are two parts to solving this problem. First, we have to determine the cost of the discounted ticket, and then we have to apply tax to that cost. There's two ways to find the discounted ticket price. You can either take the original ticket value of $195 and subtract the 20% discount, or you can observe that 100% of the ticket cost has now become 80% of the original cost. So 80% of 195 will give you $156. 
to find the after-tax cost, there's also two ways of doing it. You can either take the 5% tax and add it to $156, or you can observe that together the tax and the ticket total 105% of the base ticket cost. So 105% of 156 is $163.80. That's it for today's lesson. Time to start your assignment. Please don't forget to check your solutions before turning in your work. Bye for now.